everybody. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another one of my course vlogs. And we are out here back on the edge of the world at Los Verdes Golf Course here in Rancho Palos Verdes, California. This is the back nine. If you haven't caught the front, make sure you see the description below and there's a link down there and you can catch the front nine. Hey, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. I'd love to have you back here week after week. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. We'll see you out there on the 10th. Here we go. Starting right underneath the wedding venue here at the clubhouse, the back nine is gonna start with this short par four that heads straight up the hill. Up the hill all the way, so it's gonna play almost 400 yards adjusted. Make sure your drive gets as far up there as you can. If you can head past that little walkway, you're gonna have a gorgeous view of the green and not to mention that Pacific Ocean all off in the distance, a nearly 360 degree view up here on the Palos Verdes Peninsula. Now a driver for me here off the tee, I finally got that thing to start working for me. A little cut right off the left hand side and this one was right down Main Street. Just about 40 yards short of the green. It was a somewhat awkward distance and I just couldn't quite get this as close as I really wanted it to get. I mean, 10 feet is not bad, but I really would have loved some sort of a tap in up there. Missed the birdie putt, three and a half feet, four feet by the hole but it's nothing that we can't just clean up quickly. A nice, easy par to start the back nine, and I'm gonna be level at two over par as we are starting to head down into some of the most difficult holes here on the golf course simply because of the terrain. The 11th hole, only 305 yards on the card, and it's heading straight down the hill. Probably about 275 yards total, this is a hole where the drone just truly is not doing this hole justice. It is really down the hill. With nothing but blue skies and a gorgeous horizon on that Pacific Ocean, you can't do anything more than hit a beautiful shot that goes past the hole and down into a terrible chipping area. Luckily, I can try to get this up and down for my birdie. 15 feet again for birdie, but this one's a slippery one, a very tricky green here. You just don't know what it's gonna do unless you've seen it before. Another one left at three feet. I took my time and tapped it in. And we head on to the first par three on the back nine, and this one's heading right back up the hill. A somewhat blind shot up to this green. It's only 150 yards to the center, but it will play more with that hill. Now to the back left flag, I thought my pitching wedge could fly all the way up there with a little bit of wind behind us, but I was wrong. It landed in the front of the green and I had a very, very long putt to lag it on down there. About four and a half feet left here on the putt. This is some of the trickiest putts that I just, I'm never comfortable over these things, but it's just awesome to see them go in when they do. When they do, being the key of that entire statement. Oh boy, this might just start to get a little ugly from here on out. Lucky number 13, sure, it's heading right up the hill, 420 yards and wraps around the corner of this hill. It's going to be a blind tee shot and cut off as much as you feel comfortable. Your ball should bound down into that fairway, which is a very severe left to right slope. I don't think there's a single level lie out there. And as we head into the green, it's gonna sit way up above the fairway. You see that staircase off on the right-hand side? That is a staircase heading straight up the hill to the green. Now I was told to throttle back by my playing partners and so I hit a three wood thinking it would be good, but it was not. Still too much, straight through the fairway and down into the trees. I'm just trying to punch something out here with a five iron. I get it up on the side of that hill next to that staircase. And here, it's just a 60 degree wedge, trying to wedge it up close to the flag. 
Do not do that at all, though. About 30 feet away for par. Now it's just damage control, hitting it up there to a foot. A comfy tap in bogey to limit the damage. And we can head on down to number 14. Now the next few par fours are some of the best on the golf course simply because of the views and the distance. You can really just let it go. This 14th is gonna wrap around to the right and head slightly back up the hill as we head into the green. Plenty of trouble off the tee with bunkers all the left and right of this fairway. And if you do cut it though, you can have a shorter approach into the green, which like I said, is sitting up above the fairway. It will be a blind approach. And with these little tiny saucer fairways, or should I say saucer greens, if you're not precise, you're really gonna pay. Now I was comfortable with the little fade today, so this hole really set up beautifully for me. Another one right down Main Street, only a gap wedge into this green, but another one that I just flushed too much, I guess. I landed it in the middle of the green, it took off way back down to the front, and I had another 50, 60 foot cross country black putt, and I sent this one straight to the back of the green. I took that walk of shame, didn't move the camera, missed the next putt, and made another bogey. As we head down to probably the prettiest par four on the golf course, number 15 here is gonna be wrapping around to the left as opposed to that last par four to the right. It's still plenty long though, playing a par five from the forward tees, you're gonna need to give it all you got off this tee and as you crest the fairway, it's gonna greet you with probably the best view you're gonna have all day. Oh my gosh, this green just looks suspended off on the side of the hill with nothing but the horizon off in the distance. It's a beautiful, beautiful golf course. Now try as much as I could, I just could not turn this ball over and I actually lost it further right than I expected. Now we're gonna have to play some recovery up and over the trees here with, I believe that was a nine iron, getting it back over onto my fairway. I couldn't quite give it enough distance to get it down to the green. You can see the view I was talking about, Catalina Island off in the distance and nothing but blue ocean surrounding that green. A little approach there from 60 yards, I was able to hit it to the middle of the green and had about 30 feet here heading down the hill for par and I left myself a terrifying bogey putt here, just above the hole, but the best way to deal with them is to deal with them quickly. Hopefully you have your line, and that one went to the bottom of the cup for another bogey. We are firmly on that bogey train, and I just don't know how we're gonna possibly get off, but it's a par five, that is my feast. I think this one could be the, the magic token to get me off of that train, what do we gotta do here? A bunker is really dictating how much of this dog leg you wanna cut. And as I lasered those three trees were just flying over, it was about 275 yards. I decided right over the trees should be perfect for me. As we head into the green, a little fairway bunker there on the left to protect any approach shots, and another one protecting the green for your approach into the flag. Now this flag is on the left half of the green, which just appears to be floating on the side of the hill. Now a ton of wind up here, but the wind was helping and I flushed this one right over that set of trees and I had only an eight iron into this par five. But I hit a terrible shot, just blocked it straight over to the right and you're about to see what has become my nemesis. The flubbed chip. It's a glorious thing, truly. And man, oh man, I don't think there's anything that makes me for more frustrated. Especially when you have another one that you have to deal with off of a similarly tricky lie. How about this? Three in a row, and I trusted my wedge for that third one. Because it coming out of all of that Kukuya, I just did not think the putt was gonna roll smooth. Close enough that I tapped it in with the wedge for a another bogey, 
and we're on to the toughest par three of the day and the longest one, 225 yards, just slightly back down the hill. It's gonna play only about three to five yards shorter. Now, this was a full five iron for me. This should be a true number for me, and I hit it perfectly pin high, but just over to the left-hand side. Here in the bunker, I had a perfect lie, but man, these greens roll out towards the ocean all day long. So 10 feet under the hole, I've got to sink a putt here. Absolutely brutal lip out right there. God, it's just not what you want to see. All right, at this point, we are seven over par. Not ideal, not ideal at all. Not something I want to see, especially as I was playing out here with my men's club. I really wanted to finish strong and maybe get a skin on the day. So 420 yard par four that slightly bends to the right should fit my eye just fine. A little cut off the tee should give me a wedge in the green. We should be able to attack this front hole location. Now the cut, well, it went to the right, but unfortunately it went way to the right, way over onto the 10th fairway here. I actually had a look at the green up and over the trees. Really nothing was in my way when you hit that wedge that high, but just a little bit to the right, a little push here. We're gonna have to get up and down from these tight green surrounds again, and I could not keep that wedge on the green. A par putt from the fringe, I think we have to finish on that bogey train. Six in a row. That was a brutal finish. Like and subscribe. We'll see you next time. Later.